a quick recap of what we did in the last class. Uh, so what we said was uh, if you have an RLC network, and you're measuring, you're interested in finding uh, uh, the mean square noise at the output of the network, and this is a, a calculation that uh, often comes about in practice. And uh, if you want to do this, uh, the uh, straightforward approach would be to, as we discussed uh, several times, every resistor R sub K is uh, associated with a noise voltage uh, source with a voltage speckle density 4 k t r sub k. We find the transfer functions from every noise source to the output uh, from which we can find the speckle density and uh, uh, you can then integrate the speckle density all the way from 0 to infinity to obtain uh, V0, uh, the mean square noise in the output. Unfortunately, right, uh, that is a very, uh, you know, it is obviously a very laborious way of doing things. and. Uh, it does not make sense to do simply because we are working so hard to basically get all these transfer functions and all these uh, speckle densities uh, and finally we are throwing away I would say 99 percent of that information because you are simply integrating that whole thing from 0 to infinite. Mm? So yesterday uh, we saw how one can use exploit reciprocity and uh, uh, the idea was the following, uh, what you do is to inject an impulse current into the network uh, and let E0 be the network, uh, the energy stored in the network at t equal to 0 plus, right, and E infinity be the energy at t equal to infinity, all right. And uh, we said that uh, the mean square noise is nothing but 2 k t times E0 minus E infinity by 1 coulomb square. hope I got the spelling of Coulomb right, all right. And uh, we saw yesterday uh, cases where E infinity was 0, we also saw cases where E infinity was uh, what do you call uh, non-zero uh, and uh, uh, this uh, formula basically covers all the cases, does it make sense? Okay. Now, let us kind of uh, see this from another perspective, the same result from another perspective. Uh, so, when you inject a current into the network, right, uh, what comment can you make about the Laplace transform of the voltage uh, developed across these two terminals? Pardon? It is simply the impedance, correct? So, uh, if you inject a current impulse, uh, the voltage de developed across uh, uh, the, the two terminals of the network uh, has a Laplace transform which is simply given by the driving point impedance of the, of the network, correct. So uh, and what comment can we make about uh, the, uh, the initial energy uh, stored in the network? How can we relate it uh, to the initial voltage developed across the network? Or rather, okay, let me put it another way. What what comment can we make about the voltage developed across the network uh, at t equal to zero plus? Let me call that V O. Pardon? No. Pardon? Yeah, use and tell me what it is. V of 0 plus is simply nothing but, I mean what are all those theorems for? The voltage waveform is Z of S, correct, has a Laplace transform given by Z of S. So what is the voltage at 0 plus? 
a limit s tends to infinity s times z of s all right and uh, so what comment can we make about uh, the initial energy uh, delivered uh, to uh, the network you pumped in a current impulse correct what comment can we make about uh, the initial energy that's been delivered into the net uh, into the uh, into the network pardon yeah it's v0 plus times uh, the charge so the so e0 therefore is nothing but the charge is unity so what is this or e0 by 1 coulomb is nothing but is v0 plus which is limit s tends to infinity of s times z of s correct all right and what is e infinity by the same token well e infinity is simply q times v infinity and what is v infinity limit s tends to 0 s times 0 all right okay so what is e0 minus e infinity this is nothing but z of s all right so what is uh, this equivalent to so mean square noise is nothing but oh i'm sorry actually we missed a factor of 2 right why remember that we have injected an impulse right and how much of and what is the energy delivered by the impulse what is the energy that is going into the network, the voltage across the network has gone from 0 to 0 to V0 plus, right? V0 or 0 plus. So, what comment can we make about the energy in the network? What is the energy inside the network? It is simply the integral of voltage times the voltage waveform times the current waveform that has gone into the network and you can see that I mean uh, uh, I mean there is of course a discontinuity but if you th interpret the impulse as being uh, say for instance a thin pulse and uh, the voltage waveform doing this right it is very clear that the energy that is going in that is there inside the network is is half q times v of 0 plus. So, this is one half times this and likewise this is one half times s z of s s s tends to infinity ok all right so the mean square noise is therefore what is the mean square noise people yes it is simply k t times limit s tending to infinity of s times z of s minus limit s tending to 0 s times z of s ok. okay. Now, it turns out that you know there is a, a simple way of interpreting this s times z of s uh, as s tends to infinity. Remember let us say you have a network okay?
and let us say you had the input impedance was some z of s. Now, if let us say this is r, this is l and this is c. Now, if I multiply this by k, by k and by k or oh sorry and what will the impedance be? It will be k times z of s. Does it make sense? Correct. All impedances have been scaled by the same factor and therefore, the total impedance will also scale by the same factor k. Now, there is no necessity for that k to be real. It can be, it can be complex. So, for instance, if I make k equal to s, right. So, in other words, I divide, I, I multiply every impedance by the complex number s. What comment can we make about the looking in impedance? It will simply be s times z of s. Does it make sense people, right. Okay. Now, remember that this s is the multiplying factor for every inductor. So, what is in reality the impedance of this inductor now at a certain frequency s? Remember that the impedance of the inductor is, was s l that is now been multiplied by an extra factor s. So, every resistor has now become s times r, the impedance of the inductor has become s square times l and the impedance of the capacitor has become what was the impedance of the capacitor earlier? It is 1 over S c, it is multiplied by this complex number S. So, this has become 1 over C, correct. Now, if we let S tend to infinity, right, how can you interpret this? As S tends to infinity, S times R becomes, S times R becomes infinite. Similarly, O oh, s square times L also becomes infinite and therefore, uh, how would you interpret this, uh, uh, this uh, limit of uh, a limit as s tends to infinity of s times z of s? You open all resistors and inductors, right. Once you do that, you will get a network with only with capacitors, correct? Okay. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so therefore, how can you interpret S times Z of S? How can you interpret S times Z of S? Yeah. So basically, it is the effective capacitance. of what remains. Effective capacitance is just simply that capacitance, that number, correct? That S goes away because so let us say C1, R2, L3, okay, so this is Z of S, all right? And uh, so the question is what is S times Z of S as S tends to infinity. And uh, one way of doing this would be to find uh, the actual Z of S multiplied by S and let 
s tend to infinity the easier thing to do is do it on a branch by branch basis as s tends to infinity and then look at the resulting network so what what will this become the capacitance will become 1 over 1 over c1 right the resistance will become an open circuit the inductor will become an open circuit and what does this become a resistance of value 1 over c4 equivalently right so what is uh, uh, so therefore what is z of s times z of s as s tends to infinity staring at this what do you see it's 1 by 1 by c4 and i mean in english it basically means that you open up all resistors and inductors okay you will get a network which only consists of capacitors the equivalent capacitance that you see right is s times z of s as s tends to infinity all right pardon because the s times z of s does not have dimensions of capacitance i mean s times z of s has dimensions of capacitance not uh, uh, it is not uh, resistance, right? It's one by capacitance. Yeah, if the effective capacitance that you look, it's one by it's it's one by the effective capacitance that you look. All right. Okay. So by the same token, therefore, how do you interpret limit s tends to zero of s times z of s? What should you do? Oh well, that's straightforward. Uh, uh, as s tends to zero, s r becomes a short circuit. S square l also becomes a short circuit. So you basically say short all inductors and resistors, and you look at the the you know uh, the one over actually it should be 1 over effective capacitance looking all right now let's do this for the, for our uh, example we've chosen uh, what should you do uh, for our network what happens to c1 yeah, it becomes uh, you know a resistor value 1 over c1 right and then uh, what happens to r2 r2 becomes a short circuit l3 becomes a short circuit and c4 again as one over c okay so what comment can you make therefore as limit s tends to zero of s times z of s what is the effective capacitance looking in effective capacitance looking in it's infinite right so basically uh, uh, because it's a dead shot so therefore the uh, one over the capacitance looking in is uh, is is zero correct so what comment can we make about the mean square noise looking uh, so what is the mean square noise it's simply kt times 1 over c4 minus 0 which is kt over c4 does it make sense and is this consistent with our energy of, uh, uh, you know formulation well when you what is e0 you inject an impulse where does all that uh, current go it sits on c4 because in the beginning all the inductors are open and uh, uh, you know what do you call uh, uh, the capacitance of the shorts so e0 is nothing but 1 over 2 c4 e infinity what happens there is some initial voltage in the capacitor c4 as t tends to infinity well the inductors become short circuits and uh, there must be uh, uh, no current flowing through r2 that is what will happen at t equal to infinity and therefore uh, 
at t equal to infinity is very apparent that both C1, you know, L3 and C4 are all discharged, right, or disfluxed, okay, and therefore E infinity is what is E infinity? Zero. So mean square noise therefore is one half of kt, two kt times one over two c four minus zero, and this is basically kt over c four. All right. So uh, okay. So this term basically has uh, you know is often written as 1 over c infinity where that 1 over c infinity is basically denoting i mean this is now just a symbol that's all 1 over c infinity is simply what is c infinity is the capacitance that you see when you open up all the inductors and resistors and likewise this is nothing but if you call this scene 1 over c infinity what will you call this 1 over C0, right. So, this is written in, is also written in this form in the books. And this is what is called Bode's noise theorem. Uh, come again. What you need to do is the following: you to find C infinity. What you do is re, oh, you open up all resistors and and inductors. You will get a network with only capacitors. You find the effective capacitance looking in, right? Using all your uh, you know high school physics, right? If you have series parallel or some combination, you you can do uh, whatever uh, you need to do. And th that effective capacitance is C infinity. So, limit S tends to infinity S times Z of S is 1 over that that uh, effective capacitance that you see at infinite frequency, right. And likewise, limit S tends to 0 uh, of S times Z of S is uh, the effective capacitance you see at, at uh, uh, when all the uh, uh, resistors and inductors are shorted. And, uh, the total noise is simply nothing but kt times 1 over c infinity minus 1 over c. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay, I mean uh, the the question, the, uh, I mean uh, I was uh, hoping somebody asked this question. So, uh, a very legitimate one, he says, so well what happens if uh, you have a network like like this. Correct. What comment can we make about the spectral density at uh, at the output uh, at this node? How will this look like? At low frequency this will be What will it be at low frequency? Zero because uh, it's a high pass filter, right? At uh, high frequency, what will happen? It will eventually tend to four KTR volt square per hertz. So, what is the total integrated noise of mean square value of? Uh, uh, so, what what comment can we make about? is simply the integral of this noise uh, spectral density and what is this telling us? Oh well, this is uh, evidently infinity, right, because that spectral density is constant and you keep integrating till infinite frequency and therefore, uh, okay. So, this basically for this network therefore, for, for networks of this kind, right, you basically theoretically have this integral does not converge, correct, okay. 
and again this is telling us that oh well you know if I simply put an inductor or resistor like that I will get infinite uh, mean square voltage which basically means so can I, you know evidently something again it sounds too good to be true. So, in, uh, in reality you will never have a network like this because oh well every node is associated with the parasitic capacitance correct and uh, eventually the spectrum must uh, fall off. Okay. And uh, so, in other words this formula is only valid when the, when the integral converges right which basically means in, in all practical networks this is this is valid. Okay. Uh, likewise you can show it is straightforward to see that if you have networks uh, with R, uh, L and C and you are interested in finding the mean square if you short circuit the network and find the mean square uh, noise current you will be able to show I mean uh, you will be able to write a similar relationship. Right, involving L infinity and L zero for the mean square current noise integrated across all frequency. Hmm? All right. Uh, so, so I, as I said, this is called uh, uh, Bode's noise theorem, and uh, is a uh, is a nifty little trick to know to basically solve or to look at a complicated network and estimate what the or determine exactly what the total integrated noise will be without going through any algebra right or complicated integrals okay uh, this is not the original proof of the theorem the original proof of the theorem uh, you know uh, starts from nyquist result which is 4k which you know to be sv of f is 4kt times real part of z of s a real a real part j2 pi f correct and we need to find uh, the integral of uh, uh, so what we need is basically integral sv of f df 0 to infinity which is infinity and uh, this actually turns out that uh, you can think of it as a contour integral in the z plane this is the s play uh, this is the uh, sigma and this is the j omega plane so you take a contour like this and you integrate you go along a contour like that in the uh, z plane what comment can we make about the poles and zeros of z let's say you have a passive impedance like this what comment can we make about the poles of uh, of z poles are in the left half plane uh, what comment can you make about the zeros uh, 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 of the impedance? Where are the where are the poles and zeros of a passive impedance located? They must be in the left half S plane. So if you go around this contour, therefore, does not enclose any poles and zeros. So the contour integral around this entire contour must be. If you take z of s, which is a complex function, and the contour does not enclose any poles or zeros right the integral around the contour must be must be zero right and the uh, and uh, it turns out that the radius you choose the radius of this uh, this contour as uh, you know uh, r as r tends to infinity correct so it's uh, i leave this as an exercise for you to work out but this basically uh, it can be broken up into two pi into uh, three parts one uh, on that small circle whose radius tends to 0 and that is necessary to take care of uh, potential pole at the origin and uh, and uh, this guy here and uh, it is uh, I do not know if uh, you are able to see this, but that contour integral is basically uh, it will turn out to be uh, one contour one of those circles the large circle will turn out to be limit of s times z of s as s tends to infinity right uh, and uh, the uh, the small contour will turn out the small semicircular contour will turn out to be limit s tends uh, s times z of s as s tends to 0 and uh, uh, along the axis it will be uh, it will turn out to be uh, integral 
minus infinity to infinity real part of uh, z of j 2 pi f okay and you can relate the two and get the uh, get the uh, get the answer right uh, i mean contour integration is of course you know uh, a very valid way of finding the proof right but it's uh, at least to me it seems a lot more intuitive to basically uh, look at uh, the energy going into the network and uh, okay it also turns out that the same energy based formulation i mean you know ap approach also works when uh, you uh, as we'll see later in this course uh, when we have periodically operated switches uh, inside the network where the network no longer becomes uh, is no longer time invariant but becomes periodically time varying then uh, you will find that uh, this notion of using energy is is more general because energy does not depend on uh, the concept of energy is independent of time invariant or time variant or linear or non linear right whereas uh, when you say impedance you already mean that the network is time invariant 